Pelosi. I mean, it's just legend. Oh, I've got a lot to say. <laughs> Should I intro? Should I just get us going? Yeah, might as well get us okay. going. Let's... Well, it's been a while, but we're back. Um, this is Film School Dropouts, everyone. Hello. Wow, that's adorable. Uh, this is a movie podcast. Every season, we cover a director's full filmography, as long as it isn't. And I'm going to go ahead and start chopping off my own list here because I feel like I've been a little bit rude to the fanboys, quote unquote. Um, Lars von Trier. Mm-mm. What? Not doing him. No, we're not doing Lars von Trier. Isn't that nymphomaniac? Yeah. he's. I mean, Melancholia, one of my all-time faves, but I'm not. No, I can't, I'm good not doing that. I That's can't fine. do a whole season of us just being like, yeah, so this was fucking bleak. <laughs> like, it just wouldn't be a fun season to listen to. Well, um, even though I'm not really all about melancholy, I'm still going to fight for Lars von Trier. That's right. Why? I'm, fight. What? I'm fighting for these directors, <laughs> people. I'm okay, fighting this for is great. him. This is great because I know you don't like him at all. And you're still just like, fuck it. I'm That's fighting. right. He Put might be lower from... on the list, but we're, he's we're off the fighting. list. According to me. Absolutely not. Here comes the axe. Done. Oh, evade. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, we, we're in the middle of covering Ridley Scott. We took a half year hiatus because I had a bad job that made me want to die. But now I don't have that job anymore and I don't want to die. Yay. It's crazy how that works. So we're going to pick up right where we left off. Uh, we just finished talking about uh, Blade Runner, a movie that neither of us really liked. Yeah. Uh, man. Yeah. And I uh, think we're going to talk about another movie that neither of us really liked that much. And it's Legend. Yes, Legend. Um but we're back with Tom Cruise. Is this his second time? This is our the... second our second Tom Cruise after second uh, Tom Cruise. Magnolia. Yeah, this is number four, I believe, for Ridley Scott. This is his fourth movie. Yeah, yep. he has uh, he's made one hit so far, and that was Alien. But uh, the Duelist oh. and Blade Runner both flopped. Okay, but we both like the Duelist. So. Oh, the Duelist. That might have might have. The Duelist so far is but... my favorite movie we've covered of his. I love the Duelist. Just it's been a long okay, time. I'm not going to we were... hear the Alien slander. I oh, love okay, Alien. Not... No, no, no. This is not Alien slander. I just I like the Duelist. I don't know what to tell you. I well, they, you those boys relax. duel. Okay, well, we're trying to I start love this Alien. On, we're trying to start this off on the right foot. And well, I can't it's... like the Duelist a lot. Yeah, you can, but that's... I can't like it more than Alien. No, no. Why? That's Alien that's... has enough love. Okay, I'm no gonna throw one up. talks of. Oh God. Okay. Don't do that. Uh, okay, so anyways, uh, we're about to talk about Legend, and um, I'll be clarifying a few things about the difference. I, I want to clarify a few things about the difference between movies I don't like and movies I think are bad, but we'll get to that um, shortly. <laughs> okay. Uh, we should probably talk about little movies, though, because we always like to start our episodes off just talking about some smaller movies that might not be covered on the podcast. So sure. um, I'm yeah. going to let you take the reins on this one, and um, I'm, I'll react to whatever you do. Oh, boy. Um, so- what do you got for me? It's it's funny since I wrote this this long ago. Um, many many months. Well, we talked about this a little bit before the show started. I don't know if we have any of that recorded. Maybe they'll be in the bonus clips. But this is Alex Garland's third movie. No, Alex, Men. you did a bad job, Alex. Oh yes, Alex Garland's third his third movie, Men. His third directorial movie. He's yes. written some other sure. movies. Sure. You know, uh, and we care about directors on this on this that's podcast. true that we, yeah this is more more focused on his directing you know his first one was incredible with ex machina his second was just as good probably better it, better annihilation annihilation um, may be one of the best movies yeah that's no been made it is this entire i don't know century. why i said probably yes it is better um, incredible film so we both were very excited for this movie that would be an understatement yeah i, I like, was this is incred- one that we had circled multiple times on our yeah. calendar well in advance let's just put it in context here and i and i said this before the show but the week men came out in theaters i went and got an annihilation tattoo on my leg i so love you, annihilation yes. and alex garland so much that i got a tattoo of it and let me tell you folks um i'm gonna be looking into tattoo removal because men fucking sucked men Man, so bad i'm not even in i'm not actually gonna get a tattoo removed i'm just yeah don't do that no no, no because annihilation it. still stands it's an amazing movie another thing was the trailer for men had me genuinely spooked i was like yeah this Pretty is great trailer yeah you know i don't like trailers i watched it one time and i just it, it stuck with me yeah not a fan of men no, uh, shallow so a little surface, bit of a step down just surface level garbage there was a couple moments where I was like, oh, that that's pretty scary. But by the end, I was just like, what the hell? It, there's I this just... great, there's a great scene uh, in the middle of men where Jesse Buckley is on the phone and you can see 
the naked dude sort of like circling the house and she doesn't know he's there. That scene is genuinely unsettling. Like I thought that was quite frightening. But aside from that, man, this movie's fucking shallow, dude. This thing has nothing to say. Alex Gardenland made a movie where the thesis is, you know, men are bad. And I'm like, yeah. And that was all he had. There was nothing after that. Oh, well, I'm glad I brought there's, this little movie to the table. There's a little it's... bit at the end with the crazy birthing sequence where it's like, yeah, all these men sort of just keep, you know, it's the cycle of violence on women, all this. Sh- who? It's so bad. It's so well underthought for a guy who I feel like is maybe one of the most like profound like artists of his time. This movie is so fucking like surface level. There's nothing under it. Yeah, it's okay, a big sorry. swing in the mess. Sorry, no, it's fine. I just, I say, no, I know. I really hate men. Yeah, it, it wasn't good. I I, <laughs> I may bad. have I don't know when we, if and when we ever cover Alex Garland, I'll be we'll curious see. to see. He he might be not directing anymore. He said he's got like one more movie in the hopper, and he kind of hates directing and he doesn't want to do it anymore. So like. Oh, really? He might, he might, yeah, he might just be done with it, which, like, I don't know. After I read that article and, like, you know, having seen Men, I was like, he does that. Men feels like the kind of movie a guy who's sick of making movies makes. Like, it feels so, like, ugh, I don't know, just like slopped together. And ugh. I know he's, he has such a unique uh, visual style, though. I know. Like, I was I know. very excited. And there, you could see that with a little bit in Men. And there were, like, the whole thing with the tunnel, uh, the echoes, the sound design. like Cool, cool stuff. Sure, sure, there's, it was, yeah, but by the end of the movie, I just felt like it was really flat. Uh, yeah, so Matt. I agree with you. Uh, so what do you got for me? God, I don't know, man. It's been, it's been so many things we've been talking about lately. I feel like I'm going to just highlight a movie that um, I put on the other day, expecting to be like, this is going to be such a fucking chore. And it was a delight sweet you always bring a good movie I so feel. i i'm bringing turds over here it's okay it's all right uh i realized recently i was very close to having seen all 100 of the afi top 100 american films of all time like i was looking at the list i was like oh my god i've only got like 15 movies left and i'll be done with this list so i've kind of kicked it into overdrive recently i've been like you know watching a bunch of movies i hadn't seen so you watch 15 movies in one day four five yeah it happens oh. uh you know i get a day <laughs> off i go ham um So I've been watching these movies and I got to a little movie that uh, I have not really heard of. And the title of the movie made me go, all right, this is going to be a real, I'm going to, this is a chore. Like I'm going to have to watch this movie because it's part of the list. Let's get it knocked off the list. The movie's called Yankee Doodle Dandy. And it's from 1942. Okay. That's a classic. (laughs) I had no fucking clue what this movie was. Had never heard of it. Oh no. And it was just called Yankee Doodle Dandy. And I'm like, this is gonna suck. It's gonna be some that sounds like a delight. No, it sounds like it 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 sounds like it sounds like boring ass patriotic propaganda from the 40s. Oh my god. And I gotta say, it is patriotic propaganda from the 40s, but it's not boring and it's wonderful. It is so lovely. James Cagney is fucking a delight in this role. Yeah, and it's, it's, you've seen this movie. I'm going to oh, yeah, yeah. I, um, I used to watch um Turner Turner classic movies. With, TCM. Uh, oh, this seems like a TCM staple. Yeah, absolutely. I just, you know, I honestly, this movie just like sort of flew under the radar for me for so long. And, you know, I heard like it was like, OK, this is musical that James Cagney did. And I'm like, I don't know. This seems like it's going to suck. And like, wow, no, it is so exciting and like just delightful. And like it, it, it feels it's like. Classic. Every scene feels like, okay, he's going to get like seduced by fame and like abandoned. His... No, every scene is nice. No, he's always nice. He's a pure. good, nice man. And he dances for fun. And then he gets awarded the Medal of Honor for service to his country. Yeah, that's how we were trying to shape every American back then. We, we were trying this is the to thing. Like, the movie is like, it comes out right before, it comes out in 1942. So like right before the end of like three years away from the end of world war ii like right in the middle of world war ii it feels very pro-america propaganda which like yeah, it is absolutely. you know it is but it, it isn't done in a soulless way at all like it really feels heartfelt and like sincere and the other thing is like world war ii is like the only war where i'm like well that one was probably good that, that we that we got involved with that one we, we it's probably good that we went and did that um, yeah, I mean, we both agree war is bad, but war is terrible. And most wars that this country gets involved with are meaningless. Sure. But um, you, yeah, but World War II, back. I'm just kind of like, yeah, that that one we probably should have stepped in. And, Absolutely. You sure. Uh, so anyways, uh, yeah, Yankee Doodle cool. Dandy fucking rules. Awesome. Yeah, no, I'm glad you get to see that. That's amazing. Uh, it's great. Yeah, I've only got like 13 these, movies uh, left. 
Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why it's in the top 100. I, I don't know that I would agree it's in the 100 best American movies ever made. I probably wouldn't include that in the list, but it's a good one. That doesn't mean it's a bad movie. At the very least, you'll take it under consideration. I'll, I'll hear your, I'll hear your, you know, your arguments. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about another one that's in the AFI top 100. That's today. right. <laughs> you have number one on the AFI top 100 films Ridley of all Scott, time. Uh, is this 1984? Uh, 85, I think. 85, 84, 85, 85, some shit like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, classic legend. Let's talk about legend. There is a balance to the universe. The struggle to maintain that balance is the stuff of legends. For there can be no good without evil. No love without hate. Life needs death. Innocence feeds lust. There can be no heaven without hell. No light without me. I am darkness. All right. So you've never seen Legend before? I had not. No. Yeah, I had not either. This is one of the few Tom Cruises I had not seen. Um, I am the resident Tom Cruise acolyte on this podcast, so... Yes, uh, you felt, felt good to knock one big, out. Yeah, big fan of his. I, I enjoy him. Second. Yeah, he's great. Um, this movie had it looks like an estimated budget of twenty four and a half million. Yep. Uh, I did see some uh, really Scott interviews about this movie where he said he should have asked for a higher budget. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there's a lot of. Okay. I mean, first knee jerk reaction to Legend. I think both of us are like, nope, bad. Don't like it. Right. Like. Uh, um, I didn't really enjoy it, no. No, 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 no. no. So I, I didn't like it either. There's stuff in it that I'm going to stick up for. Um, Absolutely. There's some positives. There's some positives. Uh, I, I do want to ask you before we get going here. Did you watch the director's cut or the theatrical cut? Ooh, good question. No clue. You don't have any clue. The Zero director's clue. cut. Uh, it was seven months ago. I Sure, I understand that. We, we have not recorded in a long time. Hold on one second. Let's see here. Uh, the director, the director's cut is only like 90 minutes long. Or the, uh, I'm sorry, the theatrical cut. Okay. Uh, the director's cut is like, got another like 15 minutes of footage. Um, right, yeah, well, well, we do know one thing so far about Ridley Scott is he likes to go over his movies. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves a director's cut. That's all yeah, he does is that's make free cuts. big thing, Ridley Scott so far. It's like, dude, out man, of, uh, shit, man. Yeah, Alien, Blade Runner, now this one. Yeah, this is three out of four. We're, we're getting these little stupid. No, I'm not going to say stupid cuts. I, I'm on the fence about them because sometimes... They can legit make a movie better, but it's like, why didn't you do it on the first play? I don't know. I I go back and forth. I go back and forth. I agree. I mean, a lot of the times this stuff just gets taken away, you know, like it, legend is the case where the movie kind of got taken cut. away from him. And, you right. know, he ended up having the, the clout later on his career to revisit it. I watched the theatrical cut, which is the shorter of the two. Um, probably the one I watched. Probably the one you watch as well. Um, this movie did actually make um, on that. Uh, was it twenty four and a half million dollar budget? Uh, I see gross revenue for twenty three and a half. Okay, so another bomb. So yeah, he he lost money on this. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that happens, you know. He's on not a hot streak financially, uh, you know. Creatively, I don't, you know. I guess no. Uh, I'm not going to say this okay, is a hot so, streak right. either. So I watched, okay, months and months and months ago when we were originally going to record this before I got in a terrible job and didn't, you know, ended up having to stop doing it. I watched, I would say, the first 10 minutes of the director's cut, and then I did some looking around online just to see what the differences were, and then I threw on the theatrical cut. So I want to say a couple things about the differences between these two cuts, because they are interesting and worth noting. Good. Feed me. I I have no clue about the differences okay. uh, in so, the cuts like I did with Blade Runner or Alien. So as is the you know, sure. Um as is the case with most director's cuts, um, Ridley Scott like has like disowned the theatrical edition and says if you're gonna watch Legend, watch the director's cut. Same with the like Tom Cruise, even like until like the director's cut came out, was like disowning this movie. And he's the same way. You know, he says, if you're gonna watch Legend, don't fucking watch the theatrical cut. It's garbage. Great. They both, yes. So <laughs> the major difference that may be the cut that I watched. The director's cut or the 
I'm, I'm assuming okay, let, going on you, the you know assumption a, that I watched the theatrical cut. Here's here's the biggest giveaway. When you watch this movie, did it have a very long opening crawl of like text? Absolutely. The longest opening crawl I've ever seen in my life. That's my first note here. I, I got you. Let's um let's go ahead and, and, and read that. Once long ago, I'm not gonna read all of it. It's um, so no, I was funny. about to dude. I put my chair back here. I it's was almost so about to go to sleep. Much opening credits. So the reason that that's in there is because that's the theatrical cut. That's the one that you watched, the shorter cut, because all of that, all the information that's in that opening credits, you get through the director's cut through without like, you know, text. Like it's all in the actual movie. Okay. Um, and it's just table setting shit. Like, okay, there's this princess. There's this guy who lives in the forest. Darkness wants to take over the world. Unicorns are the most innocent beings and they bring light to the, you know, all this fancy fantasy nonsense. It was, I'm, and I'm not kidding. The longest opening. It's, it goes on for so long. It's so like, funny. It's like three Star Wars opening text. It's so funny because it's like it gives you sort of the uh, galactic sort of stakes. You know, it says like darkness has taken over the universe and the unicorns brought light and darkness wants to kill the unicorns. You're like, okay, got it. And then like the next paragraph is like, also, there's a lady and she lives in a forest. I'm like, wait, 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 hold on. Now we're talking about just like a human being. It's like one lady. And then it's like, and then there's uh, Jack. He's there. You know, uh, he's uh, he likes the he likes the nature, too. And I'm just like, what is this crawl? What is this opening text? It's so boring and so like long. Ugh. It is extremely long. So, OK, uh, the op- all of that is taken care of sort of in I wouldn't say more subtle terms, but like in the director's cut it's a little bit more it's laid out more organically i would say it sort of just happens just like a show me don't tell me type thing There's, i wouldn't say that but it's um a lot more like it makes more sense um the major differences between these two cuts are a the score the score is done in the theatrical cut by the german techno band tangerine dream who i stan and i fucking love and they do great musical scores i think their score for legend is fine it's not the best thing in the world but it works i guess you said techno yes they're like I, a synthy sort yeah of techno I, band. that definitely got 80 synthy mm-hmm. vibes from it which uh, to me didn't really fit the vibe of a fantasy about unicorns and the devil i guess you're right but at the it same fit time the like, time that the movie was made I don't, yeah i don't hate the it movie i don't uh, hate it i so, like yeah i like another most mark tangerine. against it so sure, sure sure i understand that i understand i i completely agree uh the original score was done by fucking legend jerry goldsmith who scored like the fucking star trek movies and just tons of well, la confidential i know you love that movie you scored that movie he scored he, he's a legend movie. he's an absolute fucking legend <laughs> so they, they they scrap his score fucking bring in tangerine dream to throw on some like synth pads um and make a whole new score so that's the first major difference the second major difference i would say is um the theatrical cut which is the cut that you and i both watched has what I would describe as cocaine editing. Um, it is fucking batshit <laughs> from a scene to scene basis, one shot leading into the next. I'm just like, what is fucking happening here? Okay. It is insane. The Ridley Scott's director's cut has a much more like elegant. I, I mean, that's like an insane thing to say about a movie like Legend, but like it, the the editing makes sense. It's just like the, sure. things have a little bit more time to breathe. People have a couple more lines of dialogues that maybe makes them seem like they're not, you know, strung out on fucking cocaine, okay, uh, like this right. movie does. So, yeah, okay. Um, wow. Yeah. No. Literally, my second uh, note here was, uh, "What the fuck am I watching?" Yeah, it's it's a little incoherent. It's kind of insane. So uh, I don't know. Okay. I, legend. You're watching Legend, baby. All right. And we're gonna talk about Legend. Well, uh, I think one of the highlights of this film starts right at the beginning after that opening um, when we do meet the devil in his monologue. Darkness. Darkness. Yeah. Played Satan. by Tim Curry. Yeah. Tim Curry, he said, I think these horns weighed mm-hmm. uh, quite a bit. Like it, they were. The horns had their own harness that was hidden under the makeup because okay, they were so yeah. heavy. They were extremely heavy. Um, yeah, five and a and, half hours of makeup every day for him to get into this look. Yeah, and it was totally worth it because so, it yeah. looks incredible. Unfucking okay, this is obviously this movie's lasting legacy, right? The one thing that if you talk to like anyone about legend who knows what legend is, the makeup is uh, it's legendary. It's incredible. Specifically, specifically for darkness and I, Tim mm, Curry. Like well, I, I think it is I think it's, just I think it's across the board. I don't think he is no, I mean, I mean, no, he's it, the standout. 
you know, yeah, I mean, the one thing sure. I'm just saying, the one thing that people are going to remember about this movie is Tim Curry as darkness, just eat, just eaten up. Yeah, I mean, especially with this monologue, he's like draped in this uh, like black light green. You're talking about the opening? Yeah, man. Okay, 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 okay. So the one thing that I again, I didn't watch all of the director's cut because I was like, well, if I can have an excuse to watch less of this movie, I will. So I watched the uh, theatrical, but the director's cut doesn't show him until like, like, at least, I think like something like an hour into the movie, like you don't see darkness for like most of the movie and it rules the opening of the director's cut because it you just hear his voice talking about like the battle between light and darkness and how he wants to whatever. And then he calls upon his little goblin and like the goblin shows up and you see the goblin like looking in fear at darkness, but you never see him. And I think it rules. And then you watch like the theatrical cut and you, you know, he's just like sitting in his chair and he's like kind of draped in darkness a little bit, but you can still see him. And it doesn't give him this sort of grand opening that I think that the makeup deserves. Okay. Okay. I can definitely see how like, obviously movies do it all the time now where especially horror movies that you, the less you see of the monster. Oh, they the, pull. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, obviously that that's a great technique. Um, so that might probably serve the movie a little better. I'm just saying there's not a lot to like about this movie. And, not a ton. Uh, when I saw him uh, being a badass like early on. It's it a kinda, sexy devil. Yeah, it got me invested early. And then right after that, I saw Tom Cruise and Mia okay, Sara. Okay, okay. What, so, what are the characters' names? Jack, Jack and, Lily. and Lily, I think. Yeah. All right. So here, all right. So they're weird. Okay, we're gonna get to Tom Cruise and uh Miyasara for sure got to give a shout out to Rob Botton who's the fucking special effects makeup designer for this movie he is a absolute legend uh he did the thing he did se- uh seven he did total recall robocop like this guy you is said, uh makeup yep yeah okay, he did like, yeah. He did, like the creature my... designs for the thing one two three four five six my seventh note down here makeup is incredible it's unbelievable and yeah. I, I I know that like darkness is the thing to talk about when it comes to the makeup but every other character in this movie that has makeup looks good. Like, I think that, uh, what's that fucking, what is that cool witch's name? Meg Mucklebones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She rules. She looks yeah. so good. I, I'll, I'll say this. All the bad, the disgusting villains, mm-hmm. all the little goblins, they incredible. all look great. They look incredible. Those little kids, little fairies are... Yeah, not great. Hate them. Hey. Loathe. You don't like uh, what is the name? Honeysuckle Gump or Honey? I don't know, but he sounds like I don't. It's... No, I'm talking about like the little fucking the little fruity boy. <laughs> what doesn't he? His voice is no. Something he's just awful. like some little boy. Like he's like the main boy. There's like a boy, and then there's all these other little gnomes. And he has a weird voice. The little boy. Uh, no, he doesn't have a weird voice. He just sounds like a boy. Are you sure his yeah. voice isn't horrendous? I mean, it's not good. It's a terrible voice, but it's not like a gnarly goblin voice. Well, is there like a different fairy with a horrible voice then? There's something yeah, about a little crew. Yeah. It's a little kids. I, I really know. hated all of them. Yeah, they suck. They're real bad. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's let's talk about my favorite character in the movie, though. He already did. Darkness. No, no it is well, a darkness. I'm writing this down because, you know, I keep track. Oh, you, you thought I was going to say darkness, didn't you? Well, it's written in as mine. Mm, it's not mine. Spoiler. You know what my favorite character is? Is fucking Blix the Goblin. Blix the Goblin is my fucking dude. He comes in in the beginning of the movie and he says that awesome line where I think darkness is like, is your heart full of hate? And Blix's re- response is like, black is midnight black is pitch blacker than the darkest witch and like he's just got this long nose and he's creeping around i like blix so much he's like his all he's right. like darkness's second in command all right that's I think he looks yeah, I think no. he looks incredible he says the coolest shit he like waves the unicorn at one point around. does he try does he try to come up with a plan to um yes you yes. said darkness yeah but then darkness shows up and i think blix like immediately like he gets folds. smoked no, Blix like like pawns it off on like one of the other goblins, like they were gonna do it. And, like, oh, and darkness, then he gets yeah, smoked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Blix, yeah, smart thing. Blix, and I'm Blix. Blix rules. I love live Blix. live to fight another day. His name is Blix, which is the coolest goblin name ever. Okay, we got a little Blix fandom going. I'm on a big fan here. of Blix. Okay, Blix fucking rules. Well, I definitely um, didn't see that coming. See how he doesn't have any competition with anyone else in this fight. No, no, no. I don't. Uh, it's it's either him or Darkness or Meg. Meg Mucklebones, the witch. 
No, she gets smoked too easy. She does take it. Yeah, I know you. She shows up and you're like, uh oh, this is going to be a problem. And this then Jack great. like immediately yeah, just she's like talking trash. Yeah. Yeah, I think when she she was one and done, she took one yep. hit, and lost her Im- head, immediately done. Yeah, yeah. garbage. He she blinded her chin. with her own reflection. Was that like? Uh, yeah, she looked like in that. the shield and was like, ah, and then he took advantage and gave her a swipe. He was trying to say that he she was beautiful or something like that, and like oh, remember, yeah, okay. I don't... using the old uh, charisma plus ten. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we definitely need to talk about Tom Cruise um, briefly. I guess. Uh, You can see that uh, he is, at certain points at least, he does, you see glimpses of what is to come. So put it like that. He's he's terribly miscast in this movie. Like, he should not have played this character. It's 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 just, just, it's not his role. Like, he's coming off of, like, risky business and the outsiders, so he's starting to to pop. And he takes this movie, I, I don't really know what the thinking was. I don't know why he took this movie. I guess maybe just to work with Ridley Scott. I really don't know why. Sure, yeah, absolutely. It's but kind it's, of an embarrassing performance. I okay. It, how much of it is him, and how much of it is the writing? These are not oh. good, interesting characters. No, they're, they're terrible. meant to. You know, like there's he's. I feel like some parts he's doing the best with what he's got. He's he's you going almost, for it. Like the, the, specifically one part near the end, uh, he yells like he he lets loose this very passionate yell for okay. lily and i'm like oh, okay no that's that's tom so that's here's the thing he about tom here's the thing about there tom. he is i see him especially during this time in his career i don't really buy him as valiant hero like valiant champion of the people like i just don't buy that what does he make right after this movie top gun all like and the color of money the same year like he is not at a point in his career where he is fucking i don't know if i've ever bought him in this mode he is no, I was best. about to say that, like Valiant Hero, Tom Cruise, like not him. I, he is I he's at maybe. his best when he is a cocky, like he's cocky and he's yeah, gotta, he's... he got it, like he's got to show everyone how cool he is, <laughs> and everyone you know doesn't believe him, but then at the end he fucking pulls it off. Yeah, Tom Cruise, all right, yeah. like that's Tom Cruise's fucking bread and butter. So like him showing up as like champion of nature and like saying things like they are innocence itself like he can't he just can't do this you need sure. someone honestly I mean, just... you need someone who, who's not a movie star to do this you need some like the reason tim curry is so fucking good in this role is because he's kind of a weirdo and like plays around in more schlocky genre stuff you know what <laughs> i mean he's comfortable in this zone you're looking for like a mads mickelson type guy like <laughs> mads mickelson as darkness would be fucking sexy <laughs> i'd be into this i like this casting let's remake legend <laughs> if i can yeah but honestly okay this is what you need is you need timothy chalamet in this role you need some twink who's good at just like <laughs> okay. looking at things like i just it's uh, the little dress that little battle dress he wears it's, it's just not tom it's just not sure. Tom. no i i'm, I'm, I'm not buying it and I'm, it doesn't help I'm that the movie itself is, yeah let's do it in legend <laughs> um, it doesn't help that like you said the rest of the movie around him is pretty embarrassing but, no, most of the time throughout this movie, I was like, "Why are why are the two leads talking so freaking weird?" And it's we'll say a lot of he, that is in the editing. A lot of a lot of that gets a little a little bit straightened out when it's they have more time to breathe. Oh shoot, man, maybe I should have watched the other version. Maybe you know if you're interested in like no, absolutely not. So yeah, I would say watch like the first like 15, 20 minutes, and you'll you'll get sort of an idea of like what it feels like i don't think you should sit through another hour and 40 minutes of legend maybe after uh we do all the other directors and we're back around to ridley scott we do this one again <laughs> okay, I'll do okay. That version, so. you just do a do a double take yeah until then yeah no <laughs> yeah um so yeah i mean again ridley scott he goes for broke when it comes to his production design because this movie has insane looking sets did you know that the entire forest set is a set that was all shot uh, in a studio, all the forest stuff. Those those trees are all fake. They're sixty feet tall and like twenty feet in diameter, and all shot in a studio. Uh, no, I had no clue. I thought they went outside. Nope. I thought this was set in an actual forest. Nope. That's uh, pretty impressive. Pretty fucking insane. Um, and I mean, I like a lot of that is because it needs to look like what he's drawing inspiration from. Of course, is like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and like fairy tales and right. Like that. Well, so he... oh hey, that's ding ding ding. That's my fourth note. Ridley created a fairy tale. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, this is um he got together with some writer from Montana and like they 
they kind of made this story together because he didn't want to adapt something. He wanted to come up with something original so that he didn't have to worry about adhering to like something that was already there, you know? Sure. Yeah, this um, was definitely original. Yeah, I get. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not that original. It's original. Well, well no, it's property. I guess but it's, it's. Yeah, it's original in the fact that it's as basic as as possible. Yeah, right? it really it's is. Yeah, light versus darkness. Yeah, which and I then put a couple things. Do you going think on. that like if a little kid watched this, they would enjoy it? No, you don't think so? No, I don't. I'm not like. I'm just saying, like you throw this on in a little kid. There's lots of colors, lots of scary creatures. No, you know, no, it has a no, very uh, off-putting hazy feel to it i think no kid is going to differentiate don't. this from labyrinth you know like any kid is going to sit down oh, and be like oh no. shame i'm not jesus christ brent i'm not critically comparing it to labyrinth i'm just saying i know what you're getting for... but no the goblin king you the labyrinth comes on you're dancing before you even see it you that's know what true. i'm saying that's true no that's no true. absolutely not all right no all right. There, there's thing about this the jungle in, in particular that yes it looked great and i couldn't tell the difference but it, it was something uh, like, it, did you get that where it was overly bright? There's scenes that are so like oversaturated with light where like, and also too, like, it seems much. like there's, it seems like there's like pollen floating around everywhere. Too, way too, yeah. Especially Sparkly. the scenes with the unicorns. It looks really chintzy. Yeah. The, well, that, I mean, that actually, because it's shot and that maybe has something to do with, you know, this is 85. This, there's. There is a degree of that to this movie that how mm. those movies look. Um, I was so it comes up to this the unicorn getting its horn cut off. Yeah. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, this could be visceral. I, I was almost ready to look away. Yeah, I was expecting hilarious. Some, yeah, some uh 1985, just something a little uh no. a little more grotesque or hard to look at. No, it was like a chop cut, and it was just off. Of course, so, I mean it's I mean it's a fucking kids fantasy. Like it's it, it's not going to be. Is this a kid? I don't know if this is for. Is this for kids? It's was he's this drawing such kids? inspiration from like the original Disney animation films that it's like it's hard to say no, it's not for kids. But also, it's a little too scary for kids. I would say, right? There's nothing for kids to enjoy in this movie. Yeah, you got Jack. You got honey. What? Honey Bumple Gump or whatever that guy's name is. You got the uh, unicorns are there. That's good, right? We love that. I, I get, yeah, they, I you do see <laughs> a unicorn at one point. I mean, no, I just don't. It, I'm, it's a hard, that's why I, at one point I was like, who, who is this for? I know we, I, it's, I don't, you know, it's, I, I will say it's hard for me to be mean to this movie too, because I'm always complaining about how there's not enough like sword and sorcery fantasy movies. Like there's just not. And, you know, this is just happens to be one of them and it's not that good, but I want more. There's, I want... there's no sword or sorcery. Yeah, he's no sword. Does he use it to stab someone? I think, yeah, he stabs. Satan I don't think. He... I think it's used to cut a horn and that's it. Well, what are you going to do, man? There's a I'm sword. Saying, there's some I sorcery. Know. I know this isn't a good movie. I'm just trying to defend some of it because it's not a it's not like. OK, I'll defend it a little bit. OK, let's hear um, it. The third act was fun. Interesting. Um, I was checked out by that point, but like, yeah, sure. No, that actually brought me back. Because you got more Tim Curry. Bingo. Because Tim Curry shows uh, up. Yeah, well, that's another thing. I, and he's working it. I wanted more Tim Curry. That was he's working thing. it. I was like, he's so good in this. I want more. It's an incredible performance. He is emoting so well through all that makeup. Like, he's able to give like a full performance even behind, you know, a mountain of makeup. And it, and it actually lends to the performance. Well, my favorite well. thing in this entire movie was that dance sequence where you know he's he's basically turns her yeah it's weird but okay sure oh no i like it it's she it's, it's bizarre it's bizarre that like there's like a see weird her in the seduction. new dress she like yeah. transforms yeah i'm down i yeah, like all, all right of it. all right and he gifts her he lures her with his i don't know his uh devilish okay. charm slash gifts yeah i was down i just like that uh, she really doesn't do much in this movie. No, so I'm she's barely to, a character. Trying to give her something. Barely here. a character. And uh, <laughs> there's some, I don't know, the the final little fight. He jumps over a couple swings. See, I just want. I, I was coming into this movie. I knew the legacy of how cool Tim Curry looks, so I was like ready for it, right? And then of course you don't get very much of it until like the last act, right? 
So the fact that like Blix shows up and he's just like, sup, I'm here. And I'm like, okay, who's this little rascal? And then, you know, that, that was my guy. And I kind of wish there was more Blix, you know? So what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is where's our Blix origin story? <laughs> <laughs> when is, um, fucking, what's his fucking name? When's his, uh, the guy who keeps remaking Halloween in the exorcist. When's he going to do a Blix trilogy? <laughs> David Gordon Green. David Gordon Green. When's David Gordon Green going to give me the Blix trilogy? The, the Blix the, origin story for Blix, Blix, Blix Rising. Damn. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm really not... high on Blix. Yeah, no kidding. Anytime he, a movie pulls off like a creepy little guy and like he rhymes and shit, like I'm always going to be fucking down for that. Well, you, I mean, you also pointed out the fact that he does uh, shift the blame and kind of skate out of there unscathed, you know. Darkness is sucked back, teleported away by the end of the film. Where's Blix? I mean, I guess who's running shit now? Blix is in charge. That's right. (laughs) That's right. That's fucking right. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I don't. Blix, Blix rules. It's the only part of the new Doctor Strange movie that I really liked, where at the end he like teleports his brain into a zombie and the zombie like comes up and then all of a sudden, inexplicably, with no explanation a bunch of like shadow demons show up and they're like, no, it is forbidden. And they like trying to rip his soul out. And I'm like, I don't know who these guys are, but this is working for me. Like, <laughs> and he like grabs them and makes like a shadow cape and like flies away. Like that shit. Every awesome. movie needs to have. Like, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, no, that, I was like, Whoa, Sam Raimi. This is what I'm talking about. That's what I, once Sam Raimi got to do a couple Sam Raimi things in that movie. I was like, Oh, right, right, right. It's a real movie, but yeah, it uh, didn't really work for me, but we're not here to talk about that. No, we're not. Maybe one. Um, Oh yeah, shoot! I want to talk about that more than this. You want to? We can just talk no. about Doctor Strange. <laughs> no, no. I I think this is. I think when you watch uh, Legend, you're like, okay, this movie's from 1985. You can tell. It does. Yeah. Um. So it looks chintzier than his other movies, though. Like I even watched it on like a pretty awesome like 4K scan, like a new restoration of it, and I still thought it looked kind of schlocky. Yeah, you it doesn't can say cheap. I hate using that word, but no, yes. it, it, I think it's the cinematography because I do think the sets are pretty amazing. Like you didn't even know that they were fake forest sets. I think the sets and the uh, the costuming is very good in this movie, but it does seem like there's sort of this like almost like lifetime filter over this where it kind of looks like a TV movie almost. Um, so, OK, so we both agree. That's that haziness I'm talking about. Yes, so it, it's it, the it, sets themselves look great. Yeah, but it's like the gradient he used. Or yes, like, it's it's not my favorite. No, so and this, that's, but it's I a wanted damn to... shame because especially coming off of Aliens set design and Blade, Blade Runner. Runner set design, even the Duelist had yep. looked great. Yeah, uh, we get this, and I I think he made it this look this way because he's going that to for that fantastical vibe, yes. and yeah. that's fine. It's just I don't like it. I don't think it's very well done. I wanted to use this as like a jumping off point because like we posted our Blade Runner episode on Facebook and a lot of people are like, you know, oh my God, this movie is like iconic and all this stuff. And they're right. And like, I wanted to briefly touch upon the difference between a movie I don't like and a movie I think is bad. So I don't like Blade Blade Runner. We've we've, we've covered that in the last episode. I'm not going to sit here and say Blade Runner is a bad movie though. Like it is successful in all the ways that it wants to be successful. I just find it kind of uninteresting. Right, like we we talked about how incredible that movie looks. Yeah, I mean, I I liked it. I think you I, liked it a little bit more than I did. Quite a bit more. I gave yeah. it a whole point higher. Sure, right, right. Um, and like there's there's stuff working in that movie. I think this movie is bad. Like I think I think Legend is a movie that is I don't like it, and also it was poorly executed, and I don't think it's successful on very many levels, aside from like some visual stuff. Right, I I think he big was difference. Going, he was going for a clear vision with this fantasy and i just don't like i agree with you the execution really yeah. um really didn't happen no, no uh not good. to say like tom like like i said uh, uh, there were glimpses of what tom cruise will eventually be but for the most part he was miscast yeah tom curry's that... great but i wish i had more of it uh mia sara wasn't even there kind of flat yeah yeah so hashtag team blix blix all day you want to give this a score? Are you ready to give this oh, a score? Oh, are we, are we jumping into this already? I guess there's there's not really much to talk about because it's sort of like, I guess the other thing I wanted to just really quickly, just backstory about this movie. I told you about the, you know, the, the fact that the forest was on a set. Yeah. Um, it Told was, me. Uh, it's true. Um, and it's set 
was on, I think it was called like the 007 set. And it was on at Pinewood Studios where a lot of the uh, James Bond and like Superman shot on this set. It's a huge, huge soundstage. Okay, history. Um, so Legend was shooting this big forest set. And I tried really hard to figure out what the cause of it was, but I couldn't find much. I was reading through this book I have. I was looking through interviews and stuff. This is all I know. The set burned down. <laughs> The entire oh. forest set caught fire while everyone was at lunch and the entire soundstage was destroyed. This like iconic soundstage called the 007 stage. The entire oh, legend great. set was destroyed while they were shooting the movie. So they had to like recreate like instead of, you know, recreating the whole forest, they would just like recreate like the bottoms of trees so that they could shoot around it and finish the movie. Mm -hmm. But I really couldn't figure out. I don't know if they never figured it out or if it just wasn't public knowledge, but there was a massive fire while like Ridley Scott destroyed this iconic soundstage. And uh, I never figured out what it was from. So I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy that <laughs> um, he burned down a fucking forest set and still nice. was able to finish this movie. Came from somebody like tossing a cigarette out of their car. And just Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Rolled right down. But it, happened while, it happened while everyone was on lunch. So like no one was injured or, or killed but it was a massive fire someone left a heater on right <laughs> some drag yeah 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 so that's the only other interesting thing that i could i could find about this movie um i, I guess we yeah, can score it every, everything i've uh gathered gathered from this from like the cast or ridley scott himself uh i don't I, no one really is like all about it you know there's no one's really repping it that hard not a very good movie i wouldn't either well with that being said your score is two stars. Yeah, I, I, I've given it two stars. There's enough in here for me to be like, you know, there's there's a lot of craft in this movie. We'll say. Yeah, I agree. It's two stars. Two stars. Yeah, it's yeah. not a it's not a disaster on like epic proportions. It's kind of just like a soft failure for me. Uh, it's a big step down coming off of Blade Runner for me. It is. It is. Yep. Um, yeah. I know you gave Blade Runner. I think it was like two and a half. Yeah. I gave, this is a pretty pretty big step for me. So. I'm hoping we can bounce back next time, Ridley. What do we'll we got see. coming up next? So our next movie. So we have covered four Ridley Scott movies in a row now. Yep. The Duelist is a period piece set in Napoleonic France. His next okay. movie was Alien, uh, the horror movie set in the outer <laughs> reaches of space. Yeah. Blade Runner is a dystopian kind of neo-noir sci-fi. And Legend is a sword and sorcery fantastical fairy tale. <laughs> the rubber His sword. next movie is called, and I just want to get this right because it's such a anonymous title for a movie. Um, it is called Someone to Watch Over Me. <laughs> and it stars Tom Berenger. And it is a contemporary film. So it's his first film that isn't like a period piece or some kind of genre movie. I don't okay. know fucking anything about someone to watch over me. Sweet. But it seems so you like you haven't seen it? No, I have not seen I haven't seen it. This movie. Excellent. You've seen every movie under the sun, so anytime we every time we come across uh, the the rare movies that you haven't seen, I get it extra hype. So That's why I picked him because I have not seen yeah. a ton of his movies. Yeah, so uh, it seems like after four, you know, huge genre movies in a row, it's the next couple movies are going to be a little bit scaled back and a little bit more contemporary. We're going we're gonna to spend a lot more time in modern day. Well, I mean, that closes the book on Legend. The one thing, uh, uh, Tomato, uh, I'm looking at Rotten Tomatoes here for Legend. Not good, is it? percent for critics. So the critics do not like it. Yeah. 73% for the audience. This movie so, has some kind of... Um, there is kind a little of, bit of a following. We might get a little does. backlash. No, 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 no. And that's cool. Like, I, I was looking up a lot of line. Like, when I was trying to find the difference between the two cuts, I found, like, a whole Reddit of people, like, talking about their, like, childhood love of this movie. So I think this movie does have sort of, like, a bit of a... not. I don't want to say cult following, but, like, a lot of people saw it when they were young and they're very, you know, they're endeared by it and like more power. I think you. some some parents bought it because it looked fantastical, not knowing that it really wasn't that good of a movie. Brent, here's the saying, thing, though. They put it out let's, for their kids. Let's talk about this. How many movies from when you were young, let's say between the ages of like six and 13, are super embedded in your memory? True. You you haven't seen in a long time. Hundred percent. And if you went back and watched it right now with the new with your new critical mind and your new love of movies that you maybe didn't have at the time, yeah, would be dog shit. Yeah, I've done that. And yeah. those movies, um, they're bad now. They're bad. And I think that's what legend might be for a lot of people is like a thing that they saw when they were young. And so we should be encouraging them to stay, uh, take a step back, maybe take a more <laughs> uh, critical approach, maybe. Maybe 
That's... I mean, maybe, but also I don't want to like poo poo on some, you know, someone loves legend. That's fine. You know how many fucking people are so obsessed with fucking like hocus pocus and shit where I'm just like, guys, it, you, you got to stop. No, I, like, that's a good movie. I like that. Is movie. it? All right. Are you really excited for hocus pocus too? Like, come on. I just well, say, I mean, I, I'm not going to fucking <laughs> go to bat for the sequel here. That's what or I'm anything, saying. It's like, there's just movies like, I don't know. That's whatever. just Disney milking every single property they can that's as true. hard as they possibly can. That's true. Are, do you think we're going to get a legend? Is the, who, who, who owns legend? I don't know. Is that Paramount? I don't know. No. Absolutely not. But I know then they are there. I never saw Willow, but there's yeah, a they're doing Willow. a Willow TV show now. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, kind of circling back on shoot of all the things that circle back is mm-hmm. Alec Garland and men. Uh, there, mm-hmm. He did do a TV show for FX. Um, oh, that devs. Was, devs. And I never was, watched what, that. Yeah, it was solid. So that was three things that I was excited for. And he dropped the ball. Oh, I don't want to end on the sour note. Give me something. What's something positive? Why did you bring up men? I don't know. I meant to do devs and Gar. I just, I wanted to, it was a dark spot in the episode. Maybe I wanted to make it a little brighter. What do you, what, what you want me to know. talk about something brighter? Yeah, give me give me something positive. Um uh, it's a wonderful life. What a good movie. Oh, amazing. What okay. are the best? <laughs> instantly, instantly brought me back. Just Ooh, a thank you. There we go. Wow. Yeah, no, yeah. I can that's feel better. Cry. Yeah, I feel great now. I cried but, last time I watched it. I, that movie makes me cry. I cry every time I watch it. And every time I to will my watch to it. my brother George, the richest man in town. Oh, <laughs> just crying so good no just as soon as they all start showing up like yes. for, ev- for every single person that shows up every single person that shows up oh, just triggers and... it's like a more tears a, an exponent multiplier on the tears yes exactly. and it culminate it culminates with the wings and the chime oh. it's just like i just yeah okay, oh and he I'm wakes so... up and he says like a boy clarence oh dude dude how good is? Can we do an episode on It's Wonderful? <laughs> Absolutely, anytime you want. Oh, we could do Capra. I could probably figure out a way oh, for us to do Frank wow. Capra movies. Anyway, I'm glad we got back to a real happy spot. <laughs> Should we just end every episode that we don't like? Like, if we do a movie we don't like, we just talk about It's a Wonderful Life at the end of the episode. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was needless for me to go back to. Anyway, I'm not even doing it. So, mistake. Uh, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, I know it's been a long time. It is. We're going to try and be a little bit more regular now that I have my life back. Next episode, yeah, uh, we are covering Someone to Watch Over Me. And I don't know what we're getting into, but I did buy the Shout Factory Blu-ray. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see what's going Hopefully on with that. We all have someone to watch over us. Just like Clarence from It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> uh, God, God bless you all. <laughs>